Hi, welcome to this uh, brand new installation. This is Aculinx B Xmonad. We're working on it, it's in test phase and what's better than just start making tutorials and start working on it. So this is what we, we get here. And there is also a little conky available when you start up again, figure out, hey, what are the shortcuts to navigate in this system? Basically it's the same shortcuts in as in Openbox, in i3, XFCE, um, also in BSP, WM, we keep the same things because your fingers remember what buttons to press. How to get rid of this code or this uh, conky Casey, a little alias that kills the conky. So we have um, a new system, everything is ready. What have we done until now? There is Article Linux D is ready. We've went to phase five here to the archway, phase one bias. That's loaded up and we have it here. That's what we're gonna do. The topic of the video is install Arch Linux. And then maybe later on Xmona. But first we need to get to all these phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, and in phase four, we choose a desktop, in this case, Xmona. What else is there yet already done? We've already booted up. What did we do? We installed VirtualBox. VirtualBox has been installed here. We downloaded Arch Linux 2018-1201, double clicked it, ran it, started, and it's here. It's waiting for our instructions. And the instructions are on the Arch Wiki, but we've made our own instructions in here. Arch Linux D website, phase five, chose for the bias. Bias is for the older motherboard. This is for the newer motherboard. But if you're trying to learn, then bias is the best thing to do on a virtual box. Okay, so this is virtual box waiting for us. And we need to get this thing next to the other one. So this is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna need to put this one to seven. There you go. So now we have the things next to each other. So we can compare what is the step I need to do next. Boot up from USB. Yeah, done that. So we've seen this um, boot up screen. That's still the same. And then we get inside this version. Here is a picture of the 4.16, 4.19. Kernels will always change. Uh, version 20 is now. So 4.20 is in testing. So it will probably be here by the end of the year or by the beginning of next year, 2019. Okay, fine. Then we need to say the keyboard, set the keyboard layout. Maybe you don't need to because this thing is set to QWERTY. And if you don't like that, then you have to do something. In my case, I need to load keys BE Latin one. Now I am Azerti again. So I'm happy, I can type. And if you want more information here on the wiki, you find something. And here you can find on your own computer more information about the keyboards. But basically, that's something you need to figure out. And once you know, you know, and then it's done. Verify the boot mode, you can do that. But I've decided to do a grub installation. So I know it's not having EFI, it's not there. So I'm going to skip this. Connect to the internet. You can always ping if you like to do that, but it's okay. So count four times and ping me archlinux.org. If you get this kind of message, then you know you have internet. Scrolling down, update the clock. The only danger is that we make typos and that we forget lines. So that might happen. That's already a typo. So that's why it's next to each other. It's always good to have two computers. So one is providing the information and the other one you are installing everything. So this is one of the things why I made a video earlier on. Maybe you could navigate to it as well. So Arco Linux, linuxd.com. We have here, um, nope. The Linux.com, this is a tutorial for any, 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 any Linux actually, as long as it has um, the possibility of wipe FS and SG disk and all that. 
So this article is interesting because it's also a little bit part of this um, element and it's this line. These two lines are just in here and that's the only place there were. So now I've made a separate video. So if you want to destroy all the data on your hard disk, then you can do so by these two commands. So one, choose one of them, right? And um, then everything will um, look like this again. Select a label type. You see here GPT, DOS, etc. So we'll have that as well here because it's a virtual box. It's clean installation. So let's do this. But what are the commands? Partition the disks. Basically, your hard disk is one big pizza. Okay, and we're gonna slice it up. We we'll say a piece for that and a piece for that, and we are going to tell where root is and where swap is. We keep it simple, we just take two partitions. That's enough, it will work, it's okay. So a root partition in one piece, SDA1, and another piece, SDA2. So that's how we slice it up. And then they give us the start here with CF disk. And there we go. So the image to the left is now exactly the image to the right. And that's because we start with a completely new virtual, of course, disk. But if you buy a disk from the store, you'll get the same pop-up. But once you formatted it, you won't see it anymore. So if you want to get this back, the decision if you're going to make an MBR, DOS, or a GPD, UFI, then this is the way to do it, wipe FS, or SG disk, and then you get this pop up again. So we are going doing an MBR, so I'm going to select DOS, like it says here, DOS is selected here. So I'm going to go down one and then enter. Now I actually took the same amount, yes, same amount, 30 gigabytes, 30 gigabytes as the other one, so it's no confusion, but of course. If you have a hard disk of 100 gigabytes, you're not going to take 30, so some common sense. And then you say, okay, I'm going to give 90 gigabytes to home and 10 to swap or anything like that. It's uh, the rules of thumb are up here, but mainly if you have lots of memory, then you don't need swap at all. You can live without it. But let's press enter here. It says they want to partition the size to 30 gigabytes. That's okay, no. Let's follow what it says here. Scrolling down, type 20 gigabytes. Okay, fine. So at that point in time, I set 20 gigabytes to this partition, one slice, primary, and that's 20 gig. We make it bootable because it needs to boot up. And then we go to one down and say the free space that one is going to be primary 10 gig and we are going to change the type to swap. That's it. Let's go. Let's compare. So all these steps have been here explained, every little detail, every step is explained and here we are back out. So then we choose right. We've not saved it, we've um, not even cut it. We've drawn lines over the pizza, say this is how we're going to cut it, and when we write it, then we cut it. So write, yes, he says, yes, I type, and then we quit. And then I say maybe you can have a LSBLK to check out if it's correct. And that's how we see it, 20 gigabytes SDA1, 10 gigabytes SDA2, exactly as it is here to the right. So that's how you can follow along and see if you're still uh, doing everything that you need to do. You see that numbers may vary, 18.6 I think this is, and 11.4, that's okay, that's okay. And then format the partitions. So we put slices, we cut our pizza in two pieces, but we did not draw any lines on it. So when you think about uh, a record, the old records in it that had these tracks these sectors and all that so that's what we're going to do now we're going to make the file system let me just get this get rid of this here if i can um ba -ba -ba -bum. can't i open this one that's too bad right mouse click nothing happens 
Let's see if I can get rid of that. That screen key. Screen key. Let's kill it for a moment. Kill. Yes, please. And let's go back here. So make file system dot x4. You won't see what I'm typing, but it's just in the middle where we're working, so that's uh, annoying. Make file system, draw some tracks, sectors, and all that, and x4, where the piece of the pie is, or the pizza is SDA1. That's what we're going to call our home, our root. That's it, done. And then the swap, it's going to be device SDA2. And let's swap on, activate it, device SDA2. All right, scrolling, mount to file system by key. Then we're going to mount device SDA1 and going to mount it, add it to a place on your, uh, in your file structure called MNT or mount. That's that, so behind this folder is now a hard disk, a piece of the pizza, okay, a slice. Fine, what are we going to put on that hard disk? Well, first we need to be sure that we have a fast server. If we want to download something, we want to download it fast, right? So, nano etc pacman.d mirror list. Then we say Switzerland in Belgium, no good China, worse, Slovakia, hmm. Colombia, okay, no. Germany is a little bit closer, Brazil, hmm. too far away, South Africa, too far away, Netherlands maybe, China, no, and then Germany again. So stop doing that, one is enough actually, but when, if that one is not responding, it's going to the second one, to the third one, to the fourth one, and that's how it works. So control X, I say yes, save it, enter, and it's done. So we've done here this um, mirror list and we've told him to go to Germany, basically. Um, yeah, Germany is the first one, pseudo form. Then we're going to install the base in the base development packages. So we are at this, this code here, packstrap. Inside this folder, you're going to install base and base development. If you're wondering what's in there, well, you just read. This is what's in there. Lots of packages, it's all online. Arch Linux packages, group packages, and see what's in it. But if you can read fast, well, here it is. This is what's going to be installed. It's now going to be installed on your SDA1. So the big 25, no, 20 gigabytes we took. That's where this is being installed. And the download speed is okay. 22 megabytes per second or megabits. Bytes, bytes per second. Okay, that was a car driving, driving by. A loud one. Wonder if you hear that. Okay, almost done. Well, let's prepare for the next step. Configure the system. Mm -hmm. So, remember the slices of the pizza? He needs to know, he needs to save that in a file fs tab that there is a slice here and there's a slice there. And if the, this goes wrong, that you, you get these kernel problems and uh, you have to wait for, for the boot up and stuff like that, it's often fs tab that's wrong. So let's do the, this one. Let's see if we did not skip anything. So no, backstrap. So this is the next thing to do. Generate me the file system tab minus u, mount it in the mount. Well, do it from type, write it to the mount. And this is the file to write it to, fs tab. Okay, it's that important to check. It really is that important to see if it ended up correctly. So you see the slices of the pizza. SDA1 is called UUID, blah, blah, blah. 
root extension 4. SDA2 is called UID, etc. Non swap. So basically, we're good. That's a normal structure. Then we're going to shroot. We're still in the live DVD at this point in time, but now we're going to move inside our future environment. So this is our future uh, system. If we do an LS, this is what we will be working on. This is our binary, our dev, our home, etc. Okay, very interesting to know and to read more about Shroot in here. Time zone. One more comment. If ever you get into problems and you can't boot up Arch Linux, you can always boot up Arch Linux slash Arch Linux. You need to read about Shroot. Then, time zone. We are in a particular time zone and we'll share it with him. User share share zone info. Now the capital letters are important. Europe. There are lots of things in Europe, but I need just Brussels. And then ETC local time. That's that. A hardware clock needs to be set. Sys to a hardware clock. Okay, done. I always check for typos. Locale. Nano etc. Locale. Blockchain. What language do you want? And at some point in time, you figured it out and you say, that's the one I need. Control X. Yes. Save. Done. There's more information here, but I know, of course, what to choose now. Locale. Gen. If things are not clear, Arch Wiki is there for you. There is more information there as well. And then the nano etc. Locale.conf. It's empty, not for long. I need to type in what language I want to have. Equals en underscore us dot utf minus eight. Control X, yes, save, enter. That's done as well. Next thing is the nano, but we have a shortcut, a shorter alternative. So let's take those two as the shorter alternative, but locale.conf, we've done just that. So there's just one more to do. Echo key map equals be Latin one put it inside etc vconsole.conf it's there wanna sure be sure it's there etc vconsole.conf it's there scrolling scrolling host name there's a short alternative only thing we have to do is watch out for these tricky things it's bigger than not this m percent if the text underneath shows then it actually means this one so this is to be replaced with that sign it's a little bit tricky making code on websites and that's it arch linux is my name of the computer and it's inside that file and then we're going to make, well, it's already there, but it's empty. So we're going to edit posts. And then we're going to type. Yes, we just type. Ooh. Use the tab and align them local host. Linux local domain Arch Linux. So the name 
Archelinus comes from the host name, right? So it's the same name we're reusing here. Should be the same. Network configuration, yes, we do want to have network capability once we um, are booted up again and we are installing an application that we use on all desktops. Network manager is a reliable thing, it gets you on the net. But it won't work if you don't, do not activate it. So we activate it or enable it by typing this capital N, capital M, and only then you'll see three symlinks. So we need to see these three lines, otherwise it is a typo. InitramFS is old school, they say on the wiki it's not necessary anymore, and I agree, it is not necessary anymore. So we don't do it. Next thing is the password for the root, so we are at this point in time Big Chief Administrator or root, and we are giving him a password. That's that. Bootloader, yes, we would like to be able to boot up. Otherwise, we'll see nothing. We're installing Grub, and once we install Grub, we have a lot of Grub things, a lot of possibilities. But the only one I need here is Grub install. Put it on device SDA. So add Grub to device SDA, not SDA one or two, SDA. Then we need to grab config itself, uh, itself. So make me the configuration minus O inside boot grub grub C F. Oh my God, G G. No typos. Grub uh, uh, boot grub grub C F G. Okay, looks good. Those are the lines we need. Reboot it says okay. Exit, done, unmount without an N. I always say unmount and I of course type unmount. Well, it's an U mount and now we can reboot. Okay, that's virtual box material. Um, if needed, you check it out. Oh yeah, this is about the deselecting the ISO, so you don't see this anymore, but you end up straight away with this. So this is the grub kicking in. We've created the grub, that's with success it seems. And then the next step. We're booting back in. We don't have an account Eric, we only have one account, root, and a password that I made for root. Internet is activated thanks to the network manager. We can always try this out with sudo is not actually required since we are chief already. So if this works, you know we have internet. AOR helpers are the ones that we use. Well, Packer is here and Yahoo was there, but now it's Trizen and it's yay. October 2018, we started switching and we could install an AOR helper already now in this black screen here, this thermal, but why bother and why not do it when we are on the actual machine. We'll see later, maybe there are other ways to install it as well. Multilib repository, um, well, this can be done as well later on, but um, let's do it anyway. So what I say here is go inside etcpacman.conf, the most important file on your system because it's the file that is going to uh, tell your pack manager what to do. Multilib contains packages that are interesting for installations. So packages are in there that you might need, may need, I don't know. But anyway, it's there, it's available. And when I do it again, this command here, now it says another line, Multilib. So a new line, new database is downloaded. And in the database, we get an oversight of all the packages that are coming from only there. Multilib. Okay, we have them. Bash completion, we need it. Pressing tap tap is so much fun, but we can no longer do it. 
if you don't install it, it's never going to do it. So Pac-Man minus S bash completion will work once we reboot. It's not going to work now. Personal account. Let's add this Eric to the system. User at minus M. Here I always make a lot of typos. Minus G users minus G no spaces that's one thing I always do to use spaces here not done ah storage minus s what shell would you like Eric I'm gonna give you bash and the name your login name okay done seems I did no typos if you do a typo he'll tell you it's very tricky and I don't see any typos no, so we're pretty sure that's okay. Let's give Eric a password. That's his password. And let's make sure that he can do some stuff because I cannot install anything at this point in time. So let's make him, well, a small administrator. He's not gonna be a root, but he can do root stuff. In here, we have this command, wheel all, all, all. You need to delete the hashtag, you need to delete the space, control X, yes, enter. That's it. We are now, we can now install stuff with sudo. Exit. Eric is here. Eric is there. And now I need to type, let's type pacman minus S Y Y U. Cannot perform this operation unless you're root. But since I've made this sudo thing there, all I need to do is type sudo in front of it and become the chief. All right. Back in, this, so this is all explained, network manager. So the next step, let's get graphical. We're still in the black screen. We need to install lots of stuff, uh, display, graphic, display manager, desktop environment, four blocks, right? It's all about playing with Lego. What blocks do we need to have something on our graphical here? I need to type sudo now, it's gone a little bit longer now. xorg server, I need xorg apps, that's a lot of apps in there. xorg x init and xterm. Lots of stuff, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. All installed, okay. The graphical drivers, I would say do not bother with them at this point in time. VirtualBox, it will work anyway. And on your uh, SSD hard disk machine, see what you get. If there's no screen tearing, you don't need to change anything. Otherwise, you'll see later to install an Intel or an NVIDIA or an ATI driver. It's all explained on the Xorg wiki page. And in this video, we're going to install the display manager sudo pacman minus s lightm is installed on all our systems of Arco Linux we need to install two things lightm and the lightm gtk greeter what we don't need but it's nice to have is the settings manager for gtk greeter settings so just to be complete I'm getting that one as well so lightm lightm gtk greeter and the settings but then you can forget something. Uh, typo, of course, is not allowed. There you go. What I always, well, I always, what I sometimes forget, and that's why it's here, do not forget to enable LightDM. If you don't do this line here, enable, then nothing will happen and it end up back in a black screen and you say, why, why? Okay, so sudo system ctl enable a LightDM service and something happened a symlink is now created from there to there so it's pointing to some part in our system user lib system d take a look at it it's lots of files in there okay choose your desktop is the next next thing which has not been written yet so i guess this is um, the conclusion of this part of the video the only thing i can show you now is a sudo reboot and show you that LightDM is working. It's not gonna be the LightDM you're used to, 
I mean the Arch Linux Lightium because that's tweaked and, and has a nice wallpaper and all that. This is the standard look. This is standard Lightium. Now, up here, you'll see nothing. There is no desktop yet. And in the video here on the text, do not reboot until you have a desktop environment. This happens then, but I'll explain how to get into it anyway. But um, now, next video should be getting Xmonad on this system. Okay? All right, that's uh, phase one.